Yeah, that's good. It's perfect. All right. We'll kick it off. Hello and welcome to another edition of Indie Miners. Today we're going to look at a, a, a question that we've asked in relation to wet leg. As you know, wet leg have really come out of the blocks as one of the darlings of the indie scene, in particular in relation to the debut album, their self-titled debut album that was released a week or two ago. Today we're going to ask the question, are wet leg the biggest thing to come out of the Isle of Wight since Bear Grylls? Which I think is a very interesting question. It probably is more about are they actually up to the hype? I actually thought that, that it might be interesting to find out who else actually comes from the Isle of Wight and Bear Grylls was the one that I could only sort of recognise. So that probably says something for, for the talent maybe that comes out of that, that particular island. But the way in which we're going to do this today, we're going to have a bit of discussion. We're going to look at whether they rate from a talent scale, whether they have the, the charisma to, to be able to be a longer term force in the music industry. And Finally, whether there's actually competition in the Isle of Wight, which I'd be very interested to see your thoughts. Now, Al, in terms of talent and, and I guess what you've seen, not only of the albums, but of the live shows, what, what are you thinking there? Yeah, look, as I said in the previous video, I gave the album four out of five, but each time I listen to it, it's, it's going to bump it up that little bit more. Then looking at the um, the live shows that are available via YouTube, they are a tight band. They are really, really good. Very much looking forward to the day where they're able to tour, hopefully come to Australia, maybe even Tasmania. Uh, but I'm believing all the hype, mate. The album is sensational and the live performances are brilliant. What are your thoughts, mate? I think they're really talented. I think they're, they're one of those bands that, that feel like they've been an, like an overnight success, um, like 10 years in the make. What I believe they're in their late 20s and they have been on, on various um, projects and bands over the, the preceding 10 years. So they certainly have talent. The thing that impressed me was just the, I guess, the variety of songs that they were able to, to produce. Um, yep. and, and I think, as I said in the, the previous video, they do they do Happy Sad very well, which I want to mean by that is they can do a really fun song, but sometimes they can overlay that with lyrics that, that might not be necessarily as fun, which there's not too many bands over the journey that do that. But the ones that seem to be really, really good at it seem to be very, very popular. I certainly think they, they rank on talent. So, so take we've got two ticks for talent. Charisma is an interesting one. You, sometimes you get really talented bands and they might not really want to see this, the, the, the limelight. Um, but, but ultimately, when you're buying an album, you, you sometimes are buying not only the, the songs, but the person and, and I guess the, the brand that you're getting from that. Where do you see Wet Leg in that at the moment? I think the reason why they're going to be so big is because of their charisma, the way they get along, the way that they can, uh, you know, one of them is absolutely rocking their own stage and the other one's dancing around like a, a crazy person. They are just having fun. And this is what people want to see, especially after a um, pandemic. But that's mixed with their serious side of rock and roll too. Like these girls aren't just here to party. They have some really good tunes to play. So... I think that mix of charisma, the fact that they can just get on stage and rock it out is a big tick for me, mate. What do you think? Yeah, I, I do think that they're um, very charismatic when they've been interviewed. I, I guess my biggest worry for them is that, you know, I think sometimes the hype does get on top of people too much. It's real appetite for a rock band to come out. It feels like rock has been sort of dying for a long time and this is sort of a, a new band and a new sound. And I guess what I'm hoping is that, that you know, they can surround themselves with the right people and, and sort of be themselves. They, they do, you know, you feel like they, they're they very good friends, um, the two, and I think that um, you just want to be able to see them continuing on that and, and seeing... Um, if they can sort of continue on with good albums and maybe not go down the path of, um, I guess, some of these these bands or personalities that, that become popular and, and, and they find themselves on, you know, Britain or Australia's Got Talent as a judge five oh, years God. later. You just hope that, that that doesn't happen for the girls and that they, they sort of really sort of stick to it and they, they set their own path and their own journey. I think it's a question mark for me. The only reason is, is just hopefully in the next 12 months we'll see, um, hopefully they, they stay true to who they are. Um, if not, I guess that's where bands do kind of understuck with you know, the hype, I guess, and that's what um, you, you really want them to not have to deal with. The third one here was a little bit of a, a red herring now. I mean, we're, we're comparing it to um, who's actually coming out of the Isle of Wight now. Just 
for um, everyone's benefit, both of us uh, coming out of Tasmania. So uh, we don't know a lot about the Isle of Wight, but I, I really expect um, not a lot of people maybe watching this knows a lot about Tasmania. So I guess there you go. But um, our, apart from Bear Grylls, do you know anyone who's actually come out of the Isle of Wight um, who might be sort of uh, competing against these girls? No, like you were saying, I'm very keen to um, for our... Um people viewing there uh, to give us a bit more of an insight of any other bands coming out. But I, as I was saying in the previous video, I think there's going to be a music explosion with this new sound kind of coming out. It'll be interesting to see what comes out of America and Australia. Um, very similar kind of times, I believe, mate, to like 2000, 2002, where you had the Vines, the Hives and the Strokes, um, who were all competing in this kind of new rock era. So for me, it's Wet Leg who are coming out the front runners, and I'll be very keen to see who else is going to come out really soon. So Al, what would you say? You'd say a, a, a yes, no, or, or pretty much better than Grill? What do you reckon? I'm going to have to say yeah, mate. I think he's. I think they are just a great band, and definitely better than Bear Grylls coming out of the. Uh, better the Isle better of than Bear Grylls. I, I I have to agree. I have to be better than Bear Grylls definitely. So. Just to wrap things up, uh, we actually conducted a Twitter poll. So um, anyone who has um, seen or hasn't checked out our, our Twitter site, please feel free to check it out. It's really fun. There's lots of links on there um, from interesting stuff that comes out. We put a poll up that asked this exact question and it came out that over 50% either thought that the best band since Bear Grylls or best best thing to come out since Bear Grylls or even better. Um, so 50% said even better and I'm in the even better category myself. So um, it's pretty much confirmed what we're, we're thinking Al. So mm. thanks for, for watching this and we'll see you next time. Don't, don't forget to hit subscribe, chuck us a comment. Look forward to the next episode. Thanks, BJ.